I got a really exciting package today, so I thought we should open it together. This is from a brand called Akko, and it should be my mechanical keyboard. So let's open it up together. So here is the new keyboard unbox. This is the Akko PC75B Plus Air keyboard and clearly I am just reading it from the little back sticker that they put on there. But yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and try to pretend like I know everything there is to know about keyboards because I clearly don't, nor am I really interested in getting into the hobby. I know how deeply people can get into mechanical keyboards and I just don't think it's for me. But I did choose this keyboard specifically for a few different reasons. So one is the size and I've mentioned this to you guys before but I really need the little arrow keys and it's really important that I have them especially just working in Figma a lot. I use arrow keys quite often. I also don't like it when the arrow keys are right next to the spacebar. I think that keyboard is just a little bit too cramped for me so I like this kind of size. The other thing about it that I liked about it and like why I got this keyboard is because I wanted a white base. So my mechanical keyboard that I use quite frequently is a black base keyboard. This is the HyperX, I'll put the title in here, but I can't remember it right now, but that's a, a black base keyboard and I wanted a white base just for something a little different. Next up is this little knob at the top right hand corner. So I really wanted a keyboard with this little knob here because I wanted something that would help me adjust the volume. The current way that I'm doing it is with my little headset, like my cat ear headset that I have from Razer. There's like a little scroll wheel on the left hand side where I can change the volume. But the problem with that is that it just jumps the volume between like too big like of a, of a notch, I guess. So it goes from like 19 to 25 to 31 and often that just makes it so that it's either too quiet or it's too loud and I have to go into the computer and like adjust it with the little like scroll thing that they have manually. So it's just I wanted something a little bit more comfortable and easy to change the volume and have a bit more control over that. Another reason I got this keyboard is because I wanted thockier switches and by that I just mean from my current keyboard which is a Gateron blue keyboard the keys are really clicky and it's great when you're gaming but when I'm typing like an email or I'm doing notes in Notion it's like really exhausting on my fingers and it takes a lot of pressure which like ends up hurting my hand pretty quickly if I had to like do a lot of typing. I've also never owned a hot swappable keyboard and I think when it comes to collecting keyboards the deepest I want to get into this hobby is probably getting switches and keycaps. From Echo I also decided to purchase these one piece Wano themed keycaps and it was just an instant buy for me as soon as I saw that it was one piece and it was Wano and it was pink. Sit by the window and start to debate there's nobody else. So now that I have the keycaps unboxed, I'm going to start swapping them out with the keycaps that I already have on my keyboard. I don't see myself swapping out every single one, so I'm just going to play around with it and see how I enjoy the layout. Okay, so here is the keyboard with all the keycaps that I wanted changed out into this kind of layout. And I knew that it was going to be a little bit odd. I don't know if it can show up on camera really well for you guys, but because the keycaps come from two different sets, it's pretty obvious like that they don't match because the keycaps are different heights. For like the front view, it doesn't matter too much. And I knew this was going to happen because I knew I was going to be mixing them. So I made sure to keep like all of like a set together so that it wouldn't be too weird or feel too off when I'm using it. I really like how the keyboard turned out. It has a good mix of colors and also it's not too like loud and crazy, which I also really like. So yeah, I honestly couldn't have expected anything else. And just looking at it in the viewfinder, it's just so colorful. I really enjoy how it looks. So I just got this. I'm going to test it out and see how I like it. If I notice that the keycaps are kind of bothering me because they're different heights, but for now, I think I'm really happy with the outcome.
So I've been thinking a lot lately about adding a shelf to the space above my desk. If you've watched my previous videos, you would have seen that I had a couple different layouts for shelving along the wall on this like back bonus room side. And it's just never really been something that I was absolutely in love with. And I decided to take them all down. So for this time that I'm doing it, I'm just gonna keep it really simple and do one shelf that goes along like the width of my monitors. So there are a few things that I've done already. One is that I have already marked where the studs are in the wall with my stud finder so that I know where I can place the brackets into the wall. And the brackets I got are just these from Ikea. And next I'm going to put up a piece of painter's tape. So this is just going to help me visualize what the shelf being there is actually going to look like so I can adjust the length or like how high I want it up the wall. As for the shelf, I got a piece of wood from Home Depot and I plan on cutting it so that it is exactly what I want based on like my own workspace. So I think this is going to take two cuts. The first cut is going to be shortening the length or how long the shelf is going to be and I'm looking for like about a meter in length so I'm just gonna mark that with a pencil and that should be my first cut. The next cut is that I want to make sure the shelf isn't too like wide and it comes out from the wall too much. So with the piece of wood I got, I'm worried that once I put it up on the wall, the shelf is actually going to extend past where the monitors are. And it's gonna look kind of weird, like there's gonna be like a ledge or a shadow that is just like hanging down from my monitors. And I don't really want that because I want it to be bright and light as possible. So I wanna make sure that the shelf is not gonna like I don't know, act like a roof over it, I guess. So when it comes to that, I'm thinking of cutting it to seven inches in width, because I think that is just perfect for what I have and how far my monitors are actually away from the wall. And finally, for the thickness of the wood, it's about three and a quarter inches, which is perfect for me. And I don't feel like I need to change anything there. Not like I know how to change that anyway. I really don't trust myself to try to like make that piece of wood any thinner. So with all that said, I'm going to head down to our basement, which is where we have all of our power tools set up and do the two cuts. Hey guys, so I'm down in the basement and I ended up actually using the miter saw and the circular saw in order to cut the shelf to exactly the right size that I wanted it to. I didn't end up filming it though because it was my first time using those two power tools and I was just really nervous and I didn't want like the camera to be another thing that would perhaps distract me or anything like that. But we were super safe and I just want to show you guys what I have now. So here is our little work area and I will clean up all this like extra sawdust and stuff in a little bit. But I just wanted to show you guys the shelf. So it's clamped down here onto the table and I do have like a bunch of kind of like really clear cuts. This one here that I made along the edge, that's the one I use the circle saw for. And then here where I cut off like a little bit of like the side, that's where I use the miter saw. And there is like a little bit of like extra that didn't really like saw off properly, which I will like try to sand off. But I'm just gonna clean up some of these edges that you guys can see here with my sander so that it's really smooth and really clean and just like soft I guess by the time I bring it back upstairs to put above my desk. So after sanding down the shelf and also getting my hand like all shaky from the vibrations, I used my stud finder to once again mark where the brackets are going to go just in case and then I also used a piece of painter's tape to mark down where the screws need to go for the brackets. Really simple process here of just like drilling pilot holes and drilling in the screws. Then I placed each of the brackets on top making sure it was really secure but I only did the top screw because I wanted to use my leveler to kind of figure out like is it level or like how do I like you know level it basically before I drill in that bottom screw that would secure the bracket into place. So doing that brackets in place everything's level is all good. Now the next step is just to mark where I want to drill holes into my shelf so that I can secure it into the bracket. So I marked it really quickly with a pencil and then repeated the process over again. Lots of pile of holes, lots of screws, same thing. I did use a piece of painter's tape here though to like kind of clean up a bit and I thought that was really clever. But yeah, that, that was pretty much the entire process. Very simple. Put the shelf on top of the brackets and lined it up so it was even on both sides and made sure that the holes all lined up so I could just screw it into place. And with that, we are pretty much done with the whole like shelf building process. Now we could get to the fun part, which is decorating. Yeah. 
So it is a different day, but I have the shelf up behind me. Nothing's really changed up here and I'm going to get ready and decorate it for today. It's not so much about having a lot of different things in the room, but it's more for me about having a lot of different colors because I think having different colors makes me feel more creative. So I think I'm going to add a bunch of different things and kind of like layer them on top of each other until I get that desired look I want to for my desk area and just for my shelf. So the first thing I'm going to add is this Totoro picture that I took of my puzzle that I made in my One Piece room. So I made this puzzle like a really long time ago and I liked the picture so much that I wanted to add it to like my desk area. So basically what I did was take the picture on the box, cut it out from the box and then frame it with this Ikea frame that I picked up, which is like a smaller version of the puzzle that you guys usually see next to my One Piece collection. So I really wanted to add this because I thought it would add like a nice little different color and also a different texture to my whole desk area setup. So I'm just going to put this up there. Next is this painting that I did with my company. We were doing like an event or a party and I ended up painting this, which actually got the most creative prize. I definitely didn't follow the instructions or like the guided picture. Next up, of course, I have my Fire Emblem Awakening art book. This is quite heavy, so I always get like kind of nervous when putting this up on the shelf, but thankfully like I did put it into the studs, so like it should hold, but this is quite a thick art book. I love the cover. I love all the colors in it. I love looking at it. So yeah, this is definitely going up there as well. And I think other than that, I'm going to add this plant that I've had for about a year or so. Um, this little like music player bear kind of thing that I got as a gift a while ago. And also this like empty vase. I just like the colors and the shapes that it has on there. So I think it'll match really well with everything on my desk. And of course, I'm going to finish it off with my Nintendo Switch and I'm just going to prop it up with one of those like little art easels that you can pick up at like the dollar store or whatever. I think I got this at Dollarama with one of those like canvases that you can also paint on. Um, but yeah, my Nintendo Switch is probably like one of the prettiest pieces of tech that I own. I customized it with Extreme Rates Joy-Con covers and I made a whole video talking about how I did this and it's honestly just like completely my aesthetic. So definitely putting this front and center. So here it is, a lot of desk upgrades in this video. We upgraded my keyboard and we also built, built a shelf and then decorated it on top of my desk. I think for now, I'm definitely kind of like settled with how it looks and I'm pretty happy overall um, in, in this workspace that I've created. I actually had like an entire video planned out back when my desk was like over on the side of the room where I was like making it over and just like filming a lot and trying to like make it as aesthetic as possible. I guess like it kind of got to a point where I wasn't really thinking about my desk as like a productive, comfortable space for me to work, but just like how aesthetic and pretty and creative and unique can I really make it? And how can I take the best like Instagram shot or I don't know, like show it off in a YouTube video or something like that. And it just kind of totally, like it, it wasn't the point of having a desk setup space um, at home. Like I'm really, like I work here, so <laughs> I really should be focusing on like, how can I make the space feel like I can be productive in my job, but also feel like it's space that I feel comfortable in, in my house. I, I kind of just want to like stop with the whole, like trying to decorate it or like change it up for at least a little while, I'm hoping. So I can kind of like just recenter and then think more about my desk as a functional space instead of just like aesthetic, <laughs> you know, but yeah. Um, for now, I think I'm just really happy with how it turns out and I am excited to work here.
So my parents got us these really cute little Shiba saucers. So there's one that's like this little orange one that looks like bun. And then this one is like the little black one that looks like also bun, but different. Which one do you want? Black one. <laughs> and then for the soup base, we're using this one from Little Sheep. This is the bone broth one, which we both really like, but there's also another one called plain and don't don't let the name fool you. It's not plain. It tastes really, really good. But today we're going to go with the bone broth one. And then I think we're also just going to use the other one later. Successfully, no. <laughs> myself every quarter to get a puzzle or something that I have to build and this quarter we're gonna build the thousand sunny my husband is here with me and we're gonna build it together so this is the thousand sunny model kit and it's by Bandai I picked this up on Amazon for about a hundred dollars but I think you can get it from other places too it's just that I had an Amazon gift card I wanted to use so that's why we got it there and yeah let's get started and start building it so I'm actually not sure what this is going to look like because I don't even know if the instructions are in English or not, but all of these little things are like you just pop them off and then you're able to like try to put them together. I think there's also stickers that you need to stick on as well. Oh, the whole family's here. Have you seen the shot? Yeah. <laughs> The other side is indented. You want the flat side touching the piece so that you don't cut the piece. What's this first one? Um, good. Do you, you like, do? Yeah. Do you like this? Yeah, I do. This or a Lego or a jigsaw puzzle? Dicks. This. This? this? Yeah. And I do like this. Like the, okay, very good. Yeah, I should be expecting one more thing from my company, apparently. Well, I should be too, honestly. Okay. It's just, just too cold to go in there. Yeah, like once it's above minus 40 or something, <laughs> we can check the mail. If you look at it, you see like a little nub on the inside? Mm -hmm. So like this hole has to click into that first. That's why. So far, so good. Yes. yes. So I think the last time that you guys saw the desk behind me, I said that I wanted to turn it into a meeting room or like just, I don't know, like, yeah, a meeting room. But I kind of gave it some thought and 
I personally would never turn my camera on if I was talking to a client or something, knowing that like my One Piece collection is in the background. It is in no way because I am ashamed of, you know, collecting One Piece. I love One Piece, obviously, like that's why I have such a huge collection. But I just think like for our company's target audience, it's probably like not the best way I want to like present myself for the company. So obviously like this isn't going to be a very good meeting room if I can't even feel comfortable turning on the camera. So I thought instead I would turn this into more of like a craft room or like a billy room, <laughs> um, a place where I like a creative desk that is not my desktop. And I think that would be really perfect given how like just you know colorful and bright this room really is. So I'm thinking today I'm gonna try to like reorganize the desk behind me a little bit and get that whole like changing up this whole desk setup. Also another thing I want to say is that I bought one of these like Lululemon scuba oversized zip up half zip hoodies and I completely understand why people own like 12 of these. I want to wear this every day. It is so comfortable. I can wear it to work. I can wear it just like lounging around at home. I can go to the grocery store or walk by when it's warmer. I feel like I can just wear this out and it's perfect. The hood is also so big on it, like very Assassin's Creed kind of feeling. I love it. This is the one in Pink Peony. I managed to snag one because I think there was, I don't know, on the site it said there was one left, but you know, you never really know uh, when they say that kind of stuff online. But I understand why so people have like so many of them. I too would like to collect these and, and wear them and rotate them like some kind of cartoon character. Yeah. So, uh, okay, let's, let's get to the desk. For the desk itself, like right now it is quite crowded. I moved Whitebeard and Marco over here because I just did not want to keep putting them with the straw hats. It didn't feel right. Chopper's up here now. One of my keyboards and just like a bunch of stuff that I want to unbox on camera for you. Plus I bought Sanji's cookbook. So I did form like some semblance of a cable management down here, mostly like kind of half together with duct tape. So I'm gonna take that down and then <laughs> move the monitor once it's on. Now what I want to do today is get back into drawing. So I've said this like a million times on my channel, but drawing is definitely something that I want to get better at. Something always comes up and I just don't prioritize it and I'm really working on it this year. But I've noticed that as I've been drawing, there have been like a couple things that have really helped me when it came to just improving and getting better. So the first one is to use references when I'm drawing. I used to think that if you wanted to like really be an artist or whatever, like you needed to be able to create something with like just through your imagination and draw like poses or expressions or anything like that. Not true. And also probably really slow down my progress because I would really often start sketching and then it wouldn't look right because I just did not have that. I was just not capable of thinking of it correctly and then I would just give up on the drawing and it just kept delaying my progress because I would never finish those drawings which means I would never get to doing line art more and I would rarely ever get to coloring and it just like I was always stuck in those very beginning stages of trying to sketch without a reference. So lately I have been using references in my drawing and things have just been going a lot better. So that is one thing that has really helped me when it comes to drawing lately. And the other thing is that I am just drawing more on the page. So like personally, I really like drawing faces. I like drawing people. Backgrounds are going to take a little bit more work, so I'm, I'm not really like looking to do that right now but I like to draw people. It's just that when I have this like one kind of blank canvas on my iPad I'm like super overwhelmed because 
I'm drawing this like one little tiny upper body, most likely like from here to here of a person and it just never really fills up the screen. Then my pen size feels all wrong if I try to make it bigger or try to make it smaller. So what I'm doing these days, I'll show you. I draw in Procreate by the way on my iPad, but what I'm doing this these days is actually, there's no way you can see that. Okay. I'll show it on the, I'll post it up here. But what I'm doing these days is drawing like multiple people using references in one sheet, like in one canvas. And I feel like that has really helped me first like draw more and also not make me feel so overwhelmed that I have to draw something that would be able to like take up all of that room and hold all of it and like just hold its attention. So for this year, if you follow me on Instagram, then you would know that I have a goal to read 23 books for 2023. And by the time this video comes out, I am, I should be five books down, but I, at this point, I am four books down, four out of 23, which is pretty good. So I kind of just wanted to talk about what I've read and what I plan to read next. So the first book that I read has been on my radar for quite a bit of time, and it is The Magpie Lord. So The Magpie Lord really simply is a story about our Batman, in this case it's a Lord Crane, and he also has a warlock spellcaster person called Stephen Day. Stephen is tasked with helping Lord Crane because he's suffering under like some curses, something's trying to trying to harm him. That is the story for, for the first book, and it is a trilogy, but I have not read the other two, which kind of like goes to show like how I wasn't like that big of a fan of the books. It's not like a bad book, I would say. Like it's definitely not bad. I think the the writing is quite good. I think the magic in the world is like, it makes a lot of sense and it's like, there's enough consequences to make me feel like this can be real. I, I really, tend to stay away from a lot of magic universes because, you know, there's not a lot of consequences. The writers kind of write themselves into a corner and then they use magic to get their characters out of a really sticky situation. And it just feels kind of like cheap to me sometimes when I read it like that, but I feel like in this book it was done really well. It's just like, like the rest of it. I've thought, you know, I've, I've read stories with characters that I care about more. I've read stories with the more interesting plots. Um, better dialogue, better tension, better romance. And because of that, I feel like while it is good, it's not like a great book. So that was the first book, that was The Magpie Lord. The next book I saw a lot on Book Talk, which I am just like kind of seeing a lot these days, and it is The Love Hypothesis. And I, I had to summarize it really quickly. It's a PhD student who ends up fake dating one of the profs in her university. I didn't realize it before I read this book, but it is actually based off of Star Wars fan fiction. And once I learned that, it started making a lot of sense because throughout the entire book, I had no like frame of reference to what these characters look like because the only kind of descriptive words the author used were just like, he was big, he was broad, he had dark hair. It was even less for the female main character who I think they described her as tall at one point. So without the actual cover, I would have absolutely no idea what the story is about. And that makes a lot of sense for a fan fiction because you're walking into it already knowing the characters. You read the story because you want to read the characters. As soon as I learned that, it just made a lot of sense. So I actually finished this book in a day. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was you know, just a very simple kind of shallow, I want to say, romance. 
fun but predictable and I don't really have any like I'm not really concerned about the characters after the book. After that I read Never Let Me Go and this is a book that was recommended to me from my manager. He basically told me like don't read anything about it just pick it up and read it and that's what I did which I think is a really good way and probably like the only way that you should really go into this book. I actually really enjoyed it even though it wasn't my usual like genre of preference but in a very simple summary it's a woman who reminisces about her childhood and her friends when she went to a private like boarding school and you know from the very beginning that something's not quite right there and you spend a lot of the book kind of uncovering the mystery. It's very slow burn in that kind of sense. The next book and the one that I read the most recently was Dark Rise and I had really really high expectations for this book coming in because I really enjoyed the Captive Prince trilogy. Oh actually I hold on one second I actually bought something that I wanted to show you guys. So Captive Prince is a trilogy that I read almost like I don't know, it's been a really long time and they came out with a set of short stories that I also read and purchased digitally so I can read it on my iPad back then. But when I was looking through Dark Rise and just kind of seeing what the author was up to, I found out that they actually put the short stories into a paperback with this really beautiful cover. Like I gotta show you guys this cover. It's so, so pretty. Like the artwork is fantastic on it. So yeah, I can just add this to my collection. And this is my first book purchase since I started this book journey so and I'm not even gonna read it because you know I've already read it. Dark Prize I had a lot like really really high expectations for it and part of it was because I was comparing it to the entire Captive Prince trilogy when this is only the first book in the trilogy for Dark Rise anyways. Not exactly fair however comparing it to the first book in Captive Prince I would say this one is would I say it's better? I think there's a bit more action to it. No it's quite good. It's pretty good. It, it was definitely the first book that I've read this year that I felt really like genuinely excited about and I know the second book is coming out this year so I'm really excited to pick that up. Yeah, how can I describe Dark Rise? It's good versus evil, magic, um, a boy named Will. He finds out that magic isn't gone from the world and he needs to save the world. So that's like kind of the premise and how you would start. I really enjoy the characters. They are described in the book. I have a great vision of how they look like and the author has always been really good at building tension. So you can kind of see the relationships forming already and the world is fleshed out really nicely too just like how you would start off the Captive Prince trilogy and it definitely sounds like her which makes it very exciting and it just makes me even more hyped up to read the books coming up so really happy about that. Really thankful for you guys too for recommending me to read it next because I did put out an Instagram poll asking you guys which of these few books that I plan on reading I should read next so very happy about that. Speaking about the poll, next book since I finished Dark Rise to read is going to be Crying in H Mart. This is a book where I, I really don't know too much about like how to describe it. However, I do know that it's quite an emotional book. So I'm taking a little bit of a break before I jump right into it. But yeah, that's that's probably like my next read. I am definitely trying to find those books that really move me. So I'm pretty excited to read this one next. And I think I just wanna take some time in this video to really talk about like where I've been because because this video that you guys are viewing right now was supposed to come out early January and obviously it's not early January like we're well into February already so things obviously didn't go as planned. I really wanted to make YouTube more of like a priority this year but we ended up just like hitting hitting the target when it comes to my job. It has required me to really dedicate more of my time and energy into my job. Yeah, I, I haven't been able to like have that same kind of like mental capacity to create content, which is why I've just been like a little bit more quiet. If you can hear my stomach growling, it's because I am pretty hungry right now. So I'm really sorry. I'll try to edit that out if I can. That's just kind of why I haven't been posting a lot lately. Um, I do definitely want to get back into it. Like I really wanted to post more on YouTube and just like create more content in general this year. So, ooh, so I think I like I'm still gonna try to take you guys along on that journey. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out but I hope you guys look forward to that. So yeah that's just kind of like where I've been and I just wanted to give you guys an update like it's kind of all I'm doing these days. So 
yeah anyways i just want to say thank you guys as always for watching and um yeah i thanks for watching i really hope you guys are having a good start to your new year and i will see you guys in the next one bye